it's very it's difficult to judge so speed. Yeah, but it's very yeah. difficult. Just the depth perception is, is one of the things that's really missing from simulators compared to, to the real world situations. It's very difficult to judge, both for us watching and also for him driving, when a lap is good. Um, and, and when you know one is just not, and you get you, there's two different real styles of I guess simulator driver. You get the open loop guys who just go with it and sort of freestyle it a bit, and you get the closed loop drivers who just repeat the same thing lap after lap after lap. There's maybe not really a right or wrong, just two very different ways of doing it. Is that the same true in real racing as well? Because some drivers are very much I break at this marker board, turning at this point, whereas some are a bit more fluid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's uh. I, I think in in sim racing it pays to be more of a of a closed loop driver maybe in real stuff I think you've got to be a bit more open but both work mm. to me it doesn't matter what you do it's all about results it's all about those results you get and Oliver Roland has gone second quickest just ahead of Eduardo Mortara who's put in a good lap Nico Muller in fourth Lotterer goes into fifth so suddenly it all gets a little bit closer after group three so three tenths now separate the top five but it's still Daniel Abt on provisional pole position at his home race. Again, Jack, mighty lap. You know, Oliver Rowland, uh, he's been doing the, the, the British Racing Drivers Club uh, race for the NHS, and he won the race at Monza a couple of nights ago. I'm not going to tell you where I finished, but he's, uh, he's as you said before, you he's finished. turned into a... I know, I didn't. Uh, he has turned into <laughs> a serious sim racer. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think we'll see that result today. Is, is he the guy that's going to trouble those front runners now. He's the guy that's going to trouble your Pascal Verlein, Max Gunter, and Stoffel van Dorns and close that gap to them. Well, he's started second on the grid, but now in group four, we have got the front runners out there. All eyes on Pascal Verlein, the championship leader, of course, at his home race as well, the German, coming into the final sequence of corners now. No, he's not. He's down at turn six. Uh, you can see the attack mode branding there, not using attack mode. Uh, in this championship in uh, the race at home challenge now he comes through this quick left and right down to the hairpin at turn nine and what can Verline do a reminder that pole position in race one was Stoffel van Dorn in race two was Stoffel van Dorn but then in round three Pascal Verline round four Eduardo Mortara so he's looking for his second pole position of the year Pascal Verline as he comes out now over the start finish straight and here's Max Gunter who uh, has not had a pole position this year, despite being second in the championship and despite winning the first two races. Yeah, I think Stoffel van Dorn has looked very quick through testing at the Berlin track, so I think he's going to be tough to beat today. But again, Daniel Abt's lap, <laughs> it's not going to be the work of a moment to, 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 to overthrow that. You're going to have to have a perfect lap as we go on board with Max Gunter. He starts looking for his braking zone into turn six manages to get it stopped. Look how wide the track is all the way through. Again, you see the, where the attack mode would be, this sort of the flick through turn eight. Heavy on the brakes into nine. Almost at the end of the lap now. You're thinking, ah, oh, I've got a good lap. I don't want to make a mistake. Or you're thinking, ah, oh, I've got to gain some time. And then you start overstressing and making a mistake, which to be honest, the stuff I think about when I'm driving the sim, I didn't, I'd never thought about it more in the, in the real car, as you see Max Gunter having a bit of oversteer through the middle, did it hinder him getting back to the throttle? Let's see, Jack. Gunter across the line, and he goes third quickest, two tenths away from Daniel Abt. What can Pascal Verlein do? Championship leader goes third. Daniel Abt is absolutely on it. Who else have we got out there still to set a lap time? Uh, just looking at the timing screens now, there goes Stoffel van Dorn, and he takes pole. A 1 minute 9.120 for Stoffel van Dorn. A quarter of a second ahead of Daniel Abt. Robin Freintz comes across the line, only goes 11th quickest. Oliver Turvey will be the last man to complete a lap. And Turvey, where does he slot? 10th, Jack. Why can't I see him? 10th, there we go, right in the middle. And uh, so Stoffel van Dorn takes another pole position. Daniel Abt second on the grid, Roland third. So Abt has really worked all this stuff out something has clearly clicked with him over the last week because now he is a genuine front runner and he's on the front row of the grid Stoffel van Dorn has got to be thinking okay first part of it done I've done this before pole position can't make the mistakes now that I've been making and drive away at first corner don't get caught up in anybody else's accident and try and score some serious points today
and Verlein and Gunter, the two top drivers in the championship, only fourth and fifth on the grid. So that is going to be really, not frustrating, because they're still there or thereabouts in the mix, but this is a great chance for Stoffel van Dorn, who is um, 13 points behind Verlein, so he could halve that, at least, if he wins the race today. Very, very good drive from Stoffel van Dorn. Uh, to take another pole position, his third pole position in five races. I mean, with that kind of form, that's got to be so frustrating, hasn't it? That you, 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 you've got pole that many times, but a best of third place. Yeah, you've got to start doing something different, Jack. You've got to get your, sort of mm. your mental um, concentration back or something. Get, you know, do something completely different. If you, if you got in the simulator from one side or another, do, do something different today just to change it up because you can't keep doing the same thing. You can't keep having those same accidents um, because, yeah, that's, as you said, the frustration builds and the results don't come. So let's hear from our front runners then. They're talking to Nikki Shields. Thanks very much. Wow, unbelievable. Stoffel van Dorn, a third pole position, um, but still looking for that first win. You've got your rivals, Max Gunter, Pascal Verlein, a bit further back. So is today the day? Um, I really hope so. I mean, um, in the past couple of races, I haven't been, uh, haven't been that lucky starting from pole position. So uh, I thought it was a, a little bit of a jinx, but you know, I'm feeling good today. I think I've been getting on with, well with this circuit, and I, I obviously had a good lap in quali. Um, so yeah, try and keep it clean in the, in the first couple of corners, and then um, then we'll see where we where we end up. A victory would be nice today. Yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. Thanks very much, Stoffel. Now let's take a look at those uh, qualification classifications. Indeed, let's look at the classification of qualifications, shall we? After uh, Stoffel Van Dorn secures pole position. And uh, for Mercedes-Benz as well, at their home track, it's the first time that all of those big four German manufacturers, BMW, Mercedes, Porsche and Audi, have competed virtually at their home event. There's the podium on the left-hand side where someone will be hoping to virtually stand later on. And uh, we can go back now to Nikki Shields as we have Stovel van Dorn starting on pole position for the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge in Berlin. Oh, well, exciting stuff. Good to see Stoffel feeling uh, quietly confident, I think. Now, season six have about 20 minutes to recover from qualifying and get ready for the race. Now, in the meantime, we are going to switch our attention to the challenge grid. It is, of course, the chance for our 24 sim racers to shine on that German airfield we love so much. Let's see how they go. Joshua Rogers, Peo Pev across the line to win the challenge race. Kevin Siggy takes the victory. The win on the streets of Hong Kong for Lucas Muller. It took Slovenian racer Kevin Siggy until round three in Monaco to claim his first win. But consistency and four podiums mean he's top of the standings. He's a perfectionist. I'm a bit disappointed because of my qualifying performance. I should have been pole in the uh, Two of these races, at least, the season so far for me was acceptable because I'm still leading the championship. The chasing pack are close behind, led by young German Lucas Müller. P2 in the championship, still I rise. Müller won round four in Hong Kong after a brilliant fight with Australian Josh Rogers. What a great move from Lucas Müller. To get a battle like this, especially when you're battling for the lead, it makes the victory even better. I'm still smiling, and that's something I've never had uh, because of sim racing. Bulgarian racer Payapev is third in the standings, playing catch-up after disastrous round one in Hong Kong. 
season has been up and down. It started pretty bad on the first race, on the first corner of got spun. There goes Pepep in the dragon! Yeah, it was game over, but I bounced back pretty well. Second race was amazing. Closed the gap quite a lot. A very strong drive from Peo Pep. The prize could potentially be huge for these sit races. Hoping I would win the championship and that would mean a lot to me. As driving a real Formula E car would be super cool. It's fueling the dream. It's possible to get there in a real racing car. Also going for the M2 finals, that'd be super cool to do. It's really tough out there to really qualify for that series on our factor because I've already tried it three times. I hope I do that in, uh, in the end. The challenge grid is getting more and more competitive. We get closer to the ground. It's time for the Challenge Grid race in the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. We're in Berlin for the first time on this brand new creation of the Berlin e prix circuit around the historic Tempelhof Airport just outside of Germany's capital. My name is Jack Nichols. I'm joined by Dario Franchitti, the Indy 500 multiple winner, and also by sim racing specialist Luke Crane, who is our guest commentator for the Challenge Grid with all of the sim drivers and the various guests that we've got invited here for this event. Luke, qualifying has already happened. We're about to see the first lap. What do we need to be looking out for? Well, new track, new qualifying uh, order as well. The lower drivers in the championship did indeed go first today. So group one, Lorenz Herzig was the fastest with a 19.3. Uh, Kush Maini was second by three tenths, but surprisingly, Chen Bullock Bassi only did a 109.9. In group two, though, Golan Beck, 2019 iRacing Le Mans winner, was fastest with a 109.5, but only good enough to get P8 in the end. Uh, then we had group three. And uh, Noah Rubers, his only P15, but he's had harder tasks. He's had to carry you in Baku before. Um, so that will be an interesting drive for him for P15. Uh, and then the big boys came in. Kevin Siggy, we have Berliak, we have Muller. Uh, then we have Vonda Haider, Nuno Pinto and Payev. Nuno Pinto only getting into P19. Uh, but Loren Terzing in Group 1, despite being in Group 1, held on to the front, uh, second row with fourth position. Uh, Muller only fifth, though, four spots away from the championship leader with three dri four drivers in between. Uh, but it is Siggy that takes pole position with a 109.072, so close to that elusive 108. And that is going to be great news for his championship because, you, as you can see, he is at the top of the standings. Lucas Muller in second, Peo Pev third, Petr Berliak in fourth position, and Josh Rogers in fifth. Those top five, really, the only ones in title contention I would say as we go into uh, we've only got two weeks until our championship finale but Siggy starting on pole position leading the championship he's just got to try and keep this one clean Luke yeah absolutely you know with Lucas Muller being you know three drivers back uh, he's got every single opportunity here to just drive away but we've seen in these races that anything can happen it's turn one and invariably they do Let's have a look, Dario Franchitti, at this Berlin e circuit. The first time we're seeing this recreation used. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice little track, this. And it's pre provided some great racing over the years. And it's a blank canvas, I guess, for the Formula E guys to work on, too. Yeah, absolutely. 2.3 kilometers. It's just an incredibly long first corner. In fact, all kinds of action there today. Track narrows down through 2.3 up to turn four, Jack. Then from turn four, you come through the quick flick of five, down this long back straight and into the left-hander by the radar tower down at turn six. Attack mode you can see on the ground there, but not being used today. Then we come into this quick flick left at seven and eight and down towards the really good overtaking point at turn nine. Yeah, heavy breaking in nine, Jack. And easy to, to, to set up a pass there. Hairpin the other way, turn 10, a much longer corner, a concrete surface, going to put a lot of pressure on the tyres today as you finish a lap of Berlin. So that is how the lap looks. And uh, we, are be, we will be getting on with this race in a couple of moments' time. We've got some of the uh, sim racers and as well as our wild cars like Charlie Martin and Axel Laflamme. We've also got guest drivers representing the Mission Motorsport uh, initiative. Let's have a look at the story of some of those guys. I was injured in Iraq in 2006. It was just a routine patrol. 
driving into an area that they had um, uh, put an IED down and uh, the IED had uh, caught us and, and blew my leg off and killed two of my friends in, in, this, in the same incident. Although I obviously had life-changing injuries, my friends had, had lost their lives, so in, in my head, I was a lucky one. It was the mental side that, that took me down because I was self-medicating and I was drinking you know, way too much, eating way too much. It started affecting my home life massively. Eventually, uh, it caught up with me and I got into trouble. I got into a, a fight and I was facing six years in jail. My missus said to me that you need to get help, you need to change. Uh, found Mission Motorsport and that's when things started changing for the better. Mission Motorsport look at the injuries and illnesses that each of, each of the people have got and then come up with adaptions and changes that will help them get involved in racing. It's going from simple things like drive around on a track day just to improve their mental well-being through to helping them rehabilitate and get jobs on the back end of it. Training them up as train mechanics, even getting people involved in teams. That resilience that armed forces have pretty much drilled into them transfers across. We thrive under pressure. It was eye-opening that anyone could do this. You know, it doesn't matter what injury you have or what background you have, and it kind of flicks that switch again. 2018, Terry Goran approached us and he asked if we would like to help out with um, the recovery of Billy Munger. For him to know that he's not alone in what he was going through, we, you know, we're kind of on a similar path in, in terms of recovery and it's how you deal with that early on to set yourself up for, for the future. This weekend I'm taking part in the Formula E Race at Home Challenge. When it was offered to me, I nearly bit my boss's hand off. For mental health, you do need to get out and you need to connect with people. It's the people that you're racing against, is the people that you watch on TV. You know, I'd just be honoured to, to drive in, in amongst them. So amazing stories there from the Mission Motorsport guys, and we'll keep an eye out for how Lionel did. This is the grid, though, for round five of the Formula E Race at Home Challenge. Kevin Siggy starting on pole position. Peo Peb alongside him on the front row of the grid. Petter Berliak and Lawrence Hording are in uh, row number two. Then we've got Lucas Muller in fifth position. Nick Jacobs in sixth. Jan von der Heide ahead of Gollenbeck. Then we have got in uh, ninth position Keller. Kushmini is in tenth position ahead of Jacob Reed and Chris Shepard. And then we've got Ben Hitz in 13th place for the Envision Virgin Racing Team. Noah Roivers starting in 15th. Chembolic Bassi, as we said, a surprise to be down in 16th because he's a very experienced sim racer. Nuno Pinto in 19th place. Scott Servic is in 20th position. And then we've got four Brits uh, towards the back. Axel Laflamme, Archie Hamilton. There's Lionel O'Connor just ahead of Charlie Martin. So we're about to get going with round five of the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge Grid. Kevin Siggy on pole position. He's also the championship leader. Lucas Muller starts behind him as the race gets underway down towards turn one. It's a very clean start for Siggy. The Jaguar trying to get up into second place as they come in towards turn one. There's going to be contact there. Siggy gets a hit and Siggy goes wide, but he just manages to keep hold of the lead. That was a very close moment for Kevin Siggy, but he emerges in front of Petter Berliak still in second place and Peo Pev right behind in third position. So Berliak into second in the Jaguar, Pev in third place. Lucas Muller has climbed up the fourth with Jan von der Heide in fifth. That nearly went pretty badly wrong there for uh, Kevin Siggy at the start, didn't it, Luke Crane? Oh man, yeah, that could have been curtains for this week and Lucas Muller would have had his eyes wide open there thinking I've got an opportunity, uh, but he did gain one position. That's the main thing here. Again, this championship uh, really is between Siggy uh, Berliak, Payev and Muller, and they are the front four right now. Look at this though, Lucas Muller is trying his best to get this move done, Jack. Looks to the outside, oh, bit of a knock, but uh, keeps it in position. Obviously, Siggy's still in the BMW, but worth pointing out that there have been changes in the cars that we're seeing. So if you've joined us throughout the uh, season so far, apologies if it's a bit tricky to keep on top of it, but Berliak is second in the Jaguar, Pev now third. In the, in the Dragon, and then the Mahindra of Lucas Muller running in fourth position as he looks to the inside, and he's not quite able to get through there. But this is a close battle for 
third spot. Kevin Siggy out in front at the moment. Yeah, for sure. He's doing a pretty good job here with Kevin Siggy. And Muller needs to be careful here. And being in P4, he's got a big train of cars in behind him right now. Does not want to be getting involved there. That's where we've seen the majority of the incidents happening in these races. That's just naturally motorsport, uh, Jack, really, with the mid-pack of, uh, of racing. Uh, but he's doing okay right now. But again, you know, for the championship, it's not a long-winded uh, championship here. You know, we're only having three races left, including this one. Uh, he needs to try and get as close to Siggy as possible at the earliest opportunity. Here we go. A couple of drivers going side by side here. And, well, can Miami get the job done here as well? Tucks right in the slipstream. Chris Viney trying to get past Marcus Keller. Goes up the inside into turn nine. Almost going in the back of Jan von der Heide, but that looked like a pretty neat move. Is Keller still there? Yes, he is. Into the final left-hander of turn 10. And Keller holds the position. Some nice racing over ninth place. Kevin Siggy, meanwhile, is a second up the road. Yeah, he's tonking his way down the road at this point here. Currently one second in the lead here. Uh, and again, we're still watching this battle here. Uh, Maini and uh, Keller having a hell of a battle here. But now they're under pressure from behind of uh, Jacob Reeds. Reeds getting involved here as well. Look at this, Alistair, Alistair Irvine having a battle here with Ben Hitz. And again, we're seeing all of the action in the mid-pack. You do not want to be involved in the hemorrhage time. Lap in, lap out. Lap three of 15. A reminder that this is a race royale, battle royale format, so the last driver across the line from now onwards at the end of each lap will be eliminated. There's a lunge from Ben Hitz going up the inside of Alistair Irvine and making it through into 13th. No, not quite. Charlie Martin uh, is going to be eliminated from this one. Scott Cervik in 23rd place as that scrap keeps going further back. Side by side as... Uh, Bollock Bassi tries to fight with Ben Hitz. Yeah, Bollock Bassi uh, last, uh, well, a couple of seasons ago, actually won the finale race in the Abu Dhabi F1 Esports. So, uh, you know, he's been right at the top for a long time. Jack, of course, you've casted over him many a time. Uh, it's good to see him uh, t shaking his hand here, or, or turning his hand, sorry, at some Formula E. But again, in that mid-pack, down in P15 now, he's only gained one spot so far. It's so not the best of starts here, uh, but he's one of those. If he can just keep himself involved, he'll make overtakes late in this race, no problem whatsoever. Kevin Siggy, though, leading the championship and leading the race. 1.1 seconds ahead of Peter Berliak in second position. Uh, Peo Pev in third spot. Only about 1.4 seconds behind them, but it's still Pev and Muller that are the two closest together. Uh, or as I say that, Jacobson and Horsing are side by side, but you're not going to make an overtake there. Maybe down into turn nine, Neat Jacobs might fancy it, but Lawrence Herzing covers the inside for the time being. Jacob's trying to get the cut back, but I really like this sort of switchback sequence of corners towards the end of the lap. Yeah, it's a really orthodox circuit compared to the ones we've used uh, previously. And what I mean, like, this is it's kind of a more normal circuit of what you'd be used to within motorsport. It's kind of open, um, yeah, obvious braking points. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier for the drivers here, which indeed in turn gives us a lot better action here. Uh, again, in, in, on board with Nick Jacobs and Lorenzo making a bit of a mistake there as they come through what looks like a very opposite turn one to China uh, here in Berlin. Uh, you can see them getting the rear stuck out there, Jack, and uh, that's kind of been the, the nature of the, everyone's driving style here, trying to get that rear to slip around the corners. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, very important for these drivers. Scott Servick is now out of the race. It looks as though Lionel O'Connor will be out in uh, 22nd position. Dario Franchitti, you uh, did a race last year with Lionel, didn't you? It looks like he's going to be eliminated here, but a great story to have him racing. Ah, incredible, Jack. You know, I did the, the Mission Motorsports Race of Remembrance last year up at Anglesey in November. One of the most emotional things I've ever done because they stopped the race uh, for the Remembrance service. And Lionel was running around fixing the car. Then he'd take off his prosthetic leg jump in the car, do some laps, come back in, fix it again. He's just the most incredible guy, and it's great to see him driving the challenge race today. Lap 6 of 15. Peo Pev in third position, still just ahead of Lucas Muller in their battle. Oop, bit of a slide for Pev, but he keeps it all together for the moment. Uh, Petr Berliak still 1.1 seconds behind Kevin Siggy. And Ben Hitz and Chen Bollock Bassi still fighting over 14th position we're on board with Bollock Vassi in the BMW right up behind uh, Hitz who is also right up behind Alistair Irvine who's the sort of stopper in the bottle at the moment and sliding a lot as well 
Yeah, Alistair Irvine's a strange one. I had a little a conversation with him this afternoon, and I'm really impressed to see him as high up in the field as he is. 13th, you know, some of the world's best sim racers here, Jack, as we know. Uh, and he didn't really know much about esports before this competition. He comes from uh, the same as me, a Project Cars background. And he didn't even have any idea that Project Cars had esports. And, like, that's quite a well-known esports scene. So to see him performing this well, this, the future is so bright for that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Fascinating to see what he can do over the remainder of both this race, this season, and beyond that, uh, Kevin Siggy is starting lap 7 of 15. We've lost Bill Connor and Archie Hamilton. Looks as though Axel Laflamme, the young British driver, will be the next person to be eliminated as we go on board with Marcus Keller here, trying to get past Jan von der Heide. Coming into turn one, tricky braking, turning left-hander, and they're all pretty neat and tidy at the moment. Uh, Pevan Muller still right together. Uh, Herzing and Nick Jacobs still right together, so it's pretty much as you were in the race so far as uh, Keller tries to pass von der Heide. Keller in the Mahindra, von der Heide, the Zancho Simsport racer racing for Nissan in this series, coming down into the left-hander of turn six. Nothing to be done just yet there either. Yeah, we're seeing, you know, we're in week five now. A lot of these drivers have been racing against each other. We saw that it wasn't necessarily the cleanest of races to begin with, but they're learning each other's driving styles. And now we're starting to see that coming to fruition in terms of how clean it is. But, you know, it's kind of on the flip side. I want to see these drivers take a little bit more of a chance here. Um, we, you were talking earlier about the, the tyre wear being huge around a circuit such as this. Siggy right now is just about managing that one second gap. But there's an opportunity for... Burley Act and Siggy to start battling, and that could give Muller and Payev an opportunity to close the gap. But for Lucas Muller, again, he is, you know, the head of the championship hunt towards Siggy. He needs to get into P3 as soon as possible here. So he can't be relying on the front two. He needs to get the job done himself as well. There you see Peo Pev, the Bulgarian, in his dragon kit in the bottom right. Uh, Kevin Siggy still out in front. Peter Burley in. Second place still, but Pev under pressure from Muller. Now, if these two were to swap places, that would... If it finished like this, basically, they would be right together in the championship. If Muller gets in front, he'll pull away a little bit from Peo Pev. Better Berliak won't quite be able to leapfrog them both. This is for the next elimination, meanwhile. Chris Shepard in 19th place, just four tenths behind Arjun Veltens as they come into the left-hander at turn six. So it's all or nothing on this lap for Arjun if he wants to stay in the game. Yeah, for sure. Last week, he was actually crowned the F3 champion of the Netherlands. So he's had a huge week here, uh, and he wants to try and keep hold of this position. He wants to try and stay in this race as long as possible uh, and try and continue that high that he's been living for, you know, what, seven days now. Absolutely. On board here with, oh, side-by-side, -side, Burley Ackert, sorry, Muller and Pev. And Muller has got the job done. Into turn one, the Mahindra has got in front of the Dragon. And Lucas Muller's into third position now. Quite a way behind Berliak and Siggy out in front. But Peo Pev drops from third to fourth. It's so interesting to see how drivers' paces change. When you think of how dominant Peo Pev was in uh, the third race of the... Sorry, in the second race of the season, compared to now, you know, in fourth position, struggling to hold on to a podium finish it's really amazing and Muller is a driver that's really come into this championship he missed the first race and if he hadn't have done that I wonder if he'd have been a lot closer to Kevin Siggy as far as the championship fight is concerned yeah I think you're spot on there Jack like look at it from a driver's perspective there's with this horrendous situation currently in the world like there's so many different competitions happening right now uh, as we do indeed go on board with replay Jack check this out oh well I would, Dario Franchitti, you're the racing driver here. I wouldn't have called that clean. No, <laughs> it was, he was definitely <laughs> determined with Lucas Mueller. So uh, if I was Peo Pev, I would be a little bit upset. They're still banging wheels through turn one. If you're Pev, you're thinking, you're not getting past. I'm surprised he didn't give him more of a shove. Maybe he thinks there'll be a, a penalty for Lucas Mueller towards the end of the race, but definitely uh, a robust uh, overtaking manoeuvre. Yeah, so uh, that is Muller up into third place. As Dario says, these incidents do get investigated after the race, so I wouldn't be surprised if Peo Pev lodges a bit of a, um, uh, not complaint, what's the word, protest against that overtake. Here's Alistair Irvine and Chen Bollock Bassi battling down into turn six. Uh, Chris Shepard did lose out and was eliminated. 
So Arjun Velton's managed to get in front, but whatever happened there, he's dropped a long way behind this next battle. So Velton's will be the next driver eliminated. Then it's very close between Pinto, Bullock, Bassi, Hits, and Irvine. And it's part of the thing now. Yeah, I think uh, of Alistair Irvine's naivety to this, like anyone else seeing Chen Bullock Bassi behind him, will be like, oh no, panic stations. But he probably has no idea who he is at this point, so he's just like, like just going around as he normally would like a Sunday drive. But actually, his defense work there was incredible. And actually, he's lost, uh, well, Chen Bullock Bassi's lost a position there to Ben Hitz. So Ben Hitz took full advantage. And uh, that's all from the tenacity shown by uh, Alistair Irvine. It's a great work by him. Oh, big slide. Oh, big mistake as I say that. And that allows Ben Hitz through up into 13th place. Alistair Irvine making the mistake. And Hitz is into 13th position. Now, how far away is he from the points? A good seven seconds or so. But can Irvine rectify for that mistake? And what can this man on board here, Ken Bollock Batty, do? Well, yeah, Bolabasi is one of the most experienced sim racers in the world right now. Still a, a very young man, but, you know, in terms of races done at the highest level, he is right up there with the very best here. And again, the tyre wear, four laps to go in this race. This is where it's really, you're going to earn your money at this point. You're going to earn your points because uh, you can see Siggy still managing that gap. Uh, you can see people trying to make the moves. We saw contact between Muller and Payev as well. And uh, it's desperation stations right now, Jack. There is a uh, bottom right trying to recover well but to be fair Ben Hitz is on his way isn't he there's uh, not long left in this race lap 12 of 13 now for these drivers Siggy still 1.2 seconds out in front Muller hasn't exactly broken away from Pev Marius Bollenbeck is up into fifth position with Herzing Jacobs von der Heide Reed and Keller the rest of the top 10 There we go, and uh, that is looks like Nuno Pinto has now been uh, eliminated from the race. But yeah, you're right. You know, we were expecting Muller to do what Ben Hitz is doing right now. As soon as he got past Payev, he was going to make that run away towards the leader. But you know, we saw the nature in the way he made the overtake very much on the edge, uh, a little bit dirty um, from my perspective there. And that just goes to show that he had to do that sort of move to make the overtake. He wasn't necessarily faster than the old Bulgarian. Move there round the hairpin. Well, I'll tell you what, Alistair Irvine had to go defensive there. And uh, Chem Bullock Bassi still not able to get the job done. Irvine doing a stellar job right now. He did make a mistake, but uh, just holding on to that P14 right now. And Chem is trying absolutely everything here, Jack, to get this job done. Not going to be enough, though. Out across the line. And Chem Bullock Bassi is eliminated. Finishes in 15th position. Alistair Irvine lives to fight another lap. But I think he'll be the next driver eliminated because he's two seconds behind Ben Hitz. Back to the leaders though, Kevin Siggy, 1.2 seconds ahead of Petter Berliak. So still, this gap remaining at around a second. Siggy can't afford to make a mistake here, but it looks as though he's going to extend his championship lead. Yeah, this will be one of the uh, one of the easiest race victories he's had, I would say. He's not really been put under too much pressure here. Uh, Berliak has stayed around that one second mark, but I tell you what, it's now eight tenths of a second. It's as close as it's ever been during this race. And well, has Siggy potentially burnt those tyres out? Berliak is looking very strong here indeed. through turn one then again here before they uh, quickly turn to the right here with this double uh, apex right-hander and again it's about seven tenths per second here so Berliak really is looking a lot closer as they come through the left-hand hairpin here flat out through this right-hander uh, he just hit the wall there stopped his momentum not really close enough Jack to make this move is he no it looks a little bit too far back doesn't he lap 14 of 15 though so still one more lap to go the gap has it's come down to seven tenths but he hasn't really made much more inroads than that alistair irvine's going to be eliminated at the end of this lap and uh, then it looks as though ben hits is a bit too far back from jim paresis but still just seven tenths of a second between siggy and berliak and the back end slides a little bit from siggy and that might give berliak a chance nope still seven or eight tenths there you can see siggy in the bottom right 
Yeah, he's normally quite an animated driver here, but just looks like he's in the zone today. Uh, all in check here. No over movement tree as well. Nice, soft, delicate uh, movements with the wheel. Uh, and he's doing just enough now. Again, seven tenths with the final lap coming here. Uh, Lucas Muller, nowhere near really. And again, probably will be looking at some action through the move that he did indeed make in towards the, uh, well, the last corner of this lap to set himself up for lap number one. Uh, sorry, lap number one, turn number one to get up to P3. Uh, but again, they are still very, very close indeed. Final lap of the race for Siggy and Berliak. This is Kushmini and Jim Parisis battling over 11th and 12th. So they've both made it through to the final lap. They are a little bit behind Marcus Keller, who is in the last points paying position. But this is a good debut from Kushmini. Yeah, very good debut. You know, this is, is 25 different countries on television all around the world. And, you know, he's done a very, very relatively good job. Not quite going to hit those points, I don't think. Uh, but again, a very good showing for the young Indian. Kevin Siggy, though, still, well, six tenths of a second in front of Petter Berliak. Here they come now towards the final left-hander. Siggy emerges on the Berlin E-Pre circuit to take the win in round five of the Challenge Series in the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge. Great win for Kevin Siggy, extends his championship lead and really, with only a couple of weekends to go, takes one closer step to booking his ride in a Formula E car, his drive in a Formula E car to be precise. Uh, there comes Marcus Keller across the line in 10th position to become the last of the point scorers, but it's Kevin Siggy who takes the win. A great drive and a commanding drive. It looked as though Petter Berliak at time Luke, was going to close in, but never quite got close enough. No, never really materialised, um, unfortunately for us. But again, that's testament to Siggy's dominance here. Testament to his pace, of course. Didn't quite get that elusive 108 uh, qualifying time, just shy of it by seven uh, hundredths of a second. But in the race, he just got out in front. There was a big scare, though, Jack, remember, in turn one. But he overcame that, and there you go. So Kevin Siggy takes the win. Berliak second, Muller third. We'll have a look at the full... Uh, results in a few moments time but Kevin Siggy's win extends his lead at the top of the championship and uh, he is now on 101 points with that win well he took pole position as well actually so that's 102 did he get fastest lap of the race yes he uh, no I'm looking at Stoffel van Dorn there let me look at uh, the live timing and I'll let you know whether he managed to get to 103 it's not up there so I don't know 103 to be no he didn't get it Peter Berliak set the fastest lap of the race so it's 102 points now for Kevin Siggy at the top of the championship who doesn't like live maths eh uh, let's go and hear from the race winner oh no we're going to look at our results apologies uh, of the 15 laps of racing and it is Kevin Siggy who takes the victory ahead of Petter Berliak in second place, seven tenths of a second between them. But Luke, they were six seconds clear of the rest of the field. Yeah, and it didn't look like that in the early stages of the race. You know, Payev and Muller looked like they had similar pace to the leaders, but as soon as Muller got ahead of Payev, it kind of just, they just slowed down. So, you know, Siggy, Berliak didn't really ever go side by side as well, which is always going to help them put their fastest laps out there. Uh, but a shout out here to Alistair Irvine. I thought Irvine did an exceptional job. Finding out more about him this week uh, has been an absolute pleasure as well. So I'm expecting really big things from that driver. Yeah, absolutely. Great to see what, uh, or interesting to see what they can do in the remaining rounds of this championship. But for... Kevin Siggy, it's just sort of a, a case of consolidating. There are his 102 points, and he's now 32 points clear of Petter Berliak and Peo Pev in third place. Muller and Josh Rogers, Rogers, the rest of the top five. So we're about to go for the professional drivers race for the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge in support of a very important cause, UNICEF. A new stat we've had come out last week is that we're expecting one child to die every 15 seconds in the next six months. 6,000 children a day in the next six months are likely to die as a result of the, the secondary impact of coronavirus, not being able to access health services that they would otherwise uh, have available to them. A £10 donation or a $10 donation, that pays for more than 50 bars of soap. £30 is a whole kit of PPE to protect a health worker. 
Now that, that health worker is, is protected by that, but also every patient that they see is protected by that. Thank you so much for your support. Every um, pound, dollar, whatever that we managed to raise together uh, is going exactly where we need it at the moment. Round five of the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge is about to get underway with the driver's grid. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. And uh, thank you to Luke Crane, who will be joining us again at the end of the show. But for now, we're going to turn our attention to the driver's grid, where we've got some different names towards the front of the order, which is going to be very exciting to see what they can do in this race that we have got coming up in a, in a few moments time. There are the drivers. Dario, how do you feel before you do one of your sim races? Are you one of those that's in the zone or are you just sitting playing on your phone yawning like Brendan Hartley in the top right? Um, I try to do a little bit of practice check, but not too much because then I just get frustrated with it. Then I'll go away, have a cup of tea and then get back on it just before the, the practice for the qualifying starts. Um, yeah, I tend to find if I spend too much time on it though, it's, it's, it's a very vicious circle and it just gets worse and worse. So. Uh, but that's me. These guys, I think, are a slightly higher level compared to my sim racing uh, activity, shall we say. I, d I don't know. You're pretty good. John McVern, the champion, uh, is down in the bottom right there. We've got uh, Marching Hua up towards the top, top left. Stoffel van Dorn. Um, Jerome D'Ambrosio racing in glasses. Never, never seen Jerome wear glasses before, but... There we go. It's something I've actually been thinking about doing, is getting my eyes tested, but of course that's something we can't do at the moment. And Mitch Evans, it looks like he's had a lockdown haircut. Yeah, it looks like somebody did his lockdown haircut for him that wasn't a hairdresser. There we go. Uh, we see da Daniel Abt is still, uh, <laughs> he's practicing hard. Um, obviously a front row start. He's going to be delighted with his qualifying performance. That was really quite impressive. Sam Bird sent me a picture of him relaxing on the sofa a couple of minutes ago, so he's maybe not, uh, he's now taking it seriously. Uh, Sebastian yeah. Webby's got his very funky Nissan uh, background again. I think he's tying up his shoelaces there as well as he gets ready to go. So we are uh, just a couple of moments away from the start of the race. Round five of the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge is about to get underway around the Berlin Tempelhof circuit, a brand new circuit in the virtual world made for us at Formula E by the Video 397 and R Factor 2. And we're about to have the fifth round of the championship get underway. My name is Jack Nichols. Alongside me is Indy 500 winner Dario Franchitti. And we've got Stoffel van Dorn starting on pole position for the Mercedes team. Daniel Abt alongside it on the front row of the grid. So two German brands at the front. Roland in third, Verlein in fourth. Then Max Gunter is in fifth position ahead of Eduardo Mortara. Nico Muller is seventh place. The first of the Porsches is Andre Lotterer lining up in eighth position. Further back in the field, you've got Sebastian Buemi in 11th place, Robin Freitz in 12th. Sam Bird is in 15th position, just behind his compatriot James Collado. The two Jaguars locking out row seven of the grid. Jerome D'Ambrosio starts in 16th position. And then we've got Massa, Verne, De Costa, and Ma, the rest of the top 20. And then Lucas de Grassi bringing up the rear of the grid behind Brendan Hartley. So the championship leader is Pascal Verlein. He's starting fourth on the grid. Max Gunter is second in the standings, but it's Stoffel van Dorn, third in the championship, who's lining up on pole position as we're ready to get this race underway. 15 laps, round five of the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge. All five lights are on. And we go green at home, down towards the first corner. To get the best start, it's van Dorn. Slots in nicely ahead of Daniel Apt in second position, but it's the long, long left-hander. We've seen start chaos the last few races, but it's fairly neat to know. Someone has absolutely gone firing in there. I think it was Ma, but Van Dorn is in front of Apt, who runs a little bit wide. Roland still in third place. And then uh, we've got fourth for Max Gunter. So he's got ahead of his title rival, Pascal Verlein. Stoffel Van Dorn, though, Dario Franchitti, out into the lead of the race. Yeah, Stoffel van Dorn did exactly what he had to do, Jack. He almost missed his breaking point a bit into turn one to avoid somebody running into the back of him. As, as we see some action, looks like Daniel Abt is having a move. 
to pass Stoppel Van Doren. Van Doren's, yeah, Van Doren's down to third, Jack. Lost two places, Oliver Rowland into second. And if I'm Daniel Abt, the last guy I want to see in my mirrors is Oliver Rowland because he's very aggressive and he's also really quick in the sim. You see Abt defending heavily into turn nine, but that's going to compromise his exit. Van Doren comes back again alongside Daniel Abt and they're banging wheels on the run-up to turn 10, Jack. And Apt is looking in his mirrors at Roland back up the inside of Van Dorn and thinking, OK, I can make a little bit of a break here. There you can see Van Dorn in the bottom right. We're on board with the Belgian now coming down into turn one. Now we're on board with Roland in second place. No sign of where Van Dorn is not on the attack this time around. So Apt in the lead, Roland second, Van Dorn third, Gunter fourth, Verline in fifth position. So this will be frustrating for Van Dorn because it's two drivers who are not in the championship fight who are in front of him at the moment and taking points away from him. Yeah, well, he's clearly fast enough, Jack. He just needs to get the, the racecraft sorted out here and get attacking. Taking one at a time, you see Oliver Rowland defending from where he made his move a lap ago. But Van Dorn is very wide on the entry to turn six, and that's going to open up door for Max Gunter to make a move, the guy who he definitely needs to beat today. Here's Van Dorn in second place, covers the inside just a little bit from Oliver Rowland. And whoa, Pascal Verlein sends one in on Maxi Gunter. I think the two of them, oh, and Gunter's been pushed into the wall. The two of them nudge the back of Oliver Rowland. Who's that around? Is it Gunter? I think it it's is. It's Max Gunter, I think. Yep. Just got this. So, you saw him, Jack. You saw him getting fed into the wall. And then just as got on the, the throttle and round she came. And that might be one that the stewards will look at after the race because that is not good news for Gunter's title challenge as he was fighting with Pascal Verlein. Did Verlein not leave him enough room? We'll have Love a to see a replay. Now. Oh, here we so go. This was, uh, this was the this Van the first Dorn lap, overtake. Jack. Yeah. yeah. I stuffle Van Dorn was so slow into turn six, so unlike him because he's obviously got the pace. As we see Max Gunter, Max is still in P8, so he can he can mount a challenge if there's no damage to the car. Visually, you look at it and think there's no damage, but that doesn't mean there isn't. The suspension can be damaged and the, the handling compromised, therefore. So uh, we, we don't know what each driver is, is dealing with. And you look at uh, Andre Lotter, P7, that's uh, it's pretty sporty. Yeah, he's been hit and miss a bit this year, Lotter. He was running right up towards the front of the order in one of the earlier races this season, but... Uh, then has slipped towards the back and now seems to be having a good run again. So impressive stuff from Lotterer as uh, Daniel App still out in the lead of the race. Seven tenths of a second ahead of Stoffel Van Dorn. So we'll see whether Van Dorn starts to close in. Verlein in fourth, still behind Roland. Mortara fifth. Gunter is about nine tenths behind Lotterer. So we'll see if that gap starts to come down. We're on board with the Costa as he tries to fight with Mitch Evans. And we see two of the guys that are at the front of the Real World Championship at the moment, Mitch Evans and Tony Felix da Costa, but they really haven't been very good in the sim world until today. Both of them in the top 10 now, and it looks like they've made some progress in the last week. I'm sure there's been a, more than a few hours put on the sim to get these guys, uh, to get their experience up and get them further up the grid. Right, let's have a look at what happened with Gunter here and Verline. Oh, that's first first hit, and then he, yeah, I mean, that's really not on from Pascal Verlein. He just drove, he lunged up and then just drove into the side of Max Gunter and then drove him into the wall on exit. So I think the stewards are going to take a fairly dim view of that, but that doesn't really help Max Gunter at the moment, who's in P8, and I think he must have some damage because he's not making inroads into the guys in front of him. Lap 5 of 15. We are see it, starting to see drivers eliminated. Uh, in particular, or in actuality, Lucas Degrassi and Brendan Hartley are both out of the running. And then we've got Sam Bird. Looks like he will be the next driver out. Lap 5 of 15. This is a race, Jack, that uh, Audi have dominated in Formula E in the past couple of years. Lucas Degrassi winning, Daniel Abt the year before that. You see Daniel Abt re leading the race today in an Audi, but all drivers are in identical cars with identical powertrains. So uh, it's really down to the driver's skill and uh, how, they, uh, how they set up their steering wheel and pedals. As we see one of the Envision cars having a bit of a lunge, Robin French passing Alexander Sims. 
And they're going to wheel bang all the way down to the the kink at turn eight. Gap see if front, Sims re repays the favour. Yeah, we'll see. Here comes Sims onto the brakes, and no, nope, fairly kind from Sims, but. Yeah, three tenths of a second between Apt and Van Dorn at the front now. So Stoffel is getting back towards the front of the order. Roland still two seconds adrift. Here we are then, nose to tail for the lead of the race in round five of the ABB Formula E Race Home Challenge. Big slide from Daniel Apt. <laughs> and this is something we haven't seen from Daniel Apt, this sort of technique of sliding the back of the car like all that the leading sim racers do. Something you would not get away with in Formula E in the real world. As Daniel Apt, is, is Stoffel Van Dorn going to... Make a move. Is he going to do a cut back to the inside? No. Nope. Trying. Let's go through turn six. Ah, Stoffel's so much quicker at the moment. This is a lovely feeling if you're Stoffel Van Dorn. Horrible feeling if you're Daniel Abt. You just see the. You just keep looking in your mirror. See that silver Mercedes Benz EQ getting closer and closer. Is there a lunge in the brakes though? No. Oh, oh, heavy defending from Daniel Abt. Oof. That's borderline. Depends how tough the stewards are going to be. So it's Van one of those Dorn ones if you're out into the lead of the race but so who do you think was borderline that was borderline from yeah borderline from Stoffel really but you know if, if you're if you're Stoffel you think it was fair if you're Daniel Abt you think oh what's going on let's see if Daniel repays the favor right now yeah looks like he's gonna have a go late on the brakes and Van Dorn gets the cut back underneath and he's back into first place all of this has allowed Oliver Rowland to join the party and <laughs> as almost pushing Van Dorn around turns two and three but I think he's going to push him again, Jack. He's just, he's not happy with getting nudged out of the race lead. And he's going to, I would imagine, have another go and dive bomb into turn six in a second. Just look at him lining up such a wide braking zone. Is he going to lunge again? Van Dorn defends the inside. Yep. Here we go. Ah, but completely runs wide in the corner. Watch for the silver Mercedes. Actually, it's Oliver Rowland's gone to the lead, I think, is it? Yeah, Rowland yes. gets past both of them. So Apt went up the inside of Van Dorn. I think those two had a bit of contact. And that allowed Oliver Rowland to take advantage and pass them both. And Pascal Verlein now in fourth place. Gunter is in seventh, so he's got ahead of Andre Lothra, but he was a long way behind this lead battle on lap seven of 15. Bird and D'Ambrosio have both now been eliminated. But Oliver Rowland out in front for the first time in an ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge event. And Van Dorn and Abt were still having contact several corners later, Jack. This is not over. These two are not happy with each other. I see Van Dorn again lunging on the inside into turn one. He's going to push Daniel Abt a bit wide. Daniel Abt's probably going to give him a shove in the back here in a second. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's almost spinning for Daniel Abt. That's going to allow Stoffel Van Dorn to get the, the gap, maybe a little bit of safety, and uh, start looking to attack Oliver Rowland back in the lead, Jack. Lap 8 of 15. Here they come down towards the left-hander of turn six. As you say, Van Dorn now has 1.1 seconds ahead of Stoffel Van Dorn, apt in third. And this is what Roland saw in all of this, Dario. And he's thinking, watch this, here we go. Yep, I mean, that's that's something Oliver Roland would have learned in carts when he was a kid, when he was eight years old. Just that racecraft, and he just did it beautifully there. And now he's going to be looking in his mirror, seeing that Mercedes-Benz getting closer to him in the Nissan, but Stoffel Van Dorn is, is aggressive, but Oliver Rowland's on a whole different level, and he will defend this lead with everything he's got. Lap 8 of 15. Rowland leading. Seven tenths ahead of Van Dorn in second. Apt in third. There he is in the Audi. Then it's the Mahindra of Pascal Verlein in fourth, and Eduardo Mortara is having another great race, actually. He qualified on pole as we see Evans and DaCosta fighting over ninth place but he qualified on pole last time Mortara with not much practice now it seems as though he's put a bit of practice in and he's running well with the front pack ahead of Nico Muller and Max Gunter still quite away from Muller as we go on board with Mitch Evans in the Jaguar trying to get past DaCosta in front yeah again Jack Mortara is just that sort of step back isn't he from those front running cars but he's closing the gap in the Venturi and uh, I think it will continue to happen these next couple of races as we get towards the, the grand final of the Race at Home series. There you see Evans on the inset. Sliding the car in 10th position at the moment. Roland's, Roland's got back up to a second ahead of Stoffel Van Dorn so it fluctuates that gap but Roland seems fairly in control of it at the moment Daniel Apt in third position fourth still Verline fifth still Mortara but here comes Roland across the line now to start lap 10 of 15 
uh, D'Ambrosio, Vern Ma all now eliminated. James Collado looks like he'll be the next to go. And here is Eduardo Mortara, who's putting Pascal Verlein under a, a bit of pressure here. Through the double right. And then out onto the back board with. Yeah, go on board with Edo Mortara. Ah, he just loses a bit. As you see the, the, the torque of the electric motor in real life and in sim racing. Just overwhelms the rear tyres. He just loses that gap. That stops him having an opportunity to, to make a, a, an attempt to pass again anyway through turn six. By this point, Jack, the tyres will be just starting to get really tired and the car will be sliding around a wee bit more as you see Pascal Verlaine just having some contact with the wall through the chicane. Got Mortara still right behind him. They're about to start lap 11 of 15. Again, the gap at the front comes back down to six tenths of a second. Through the left hander and out over the start finish straight again. Back up to seven. It's going to take a mistake, I think, from Roland if Van Dorn wants to get an opportunity. They both dropped Daniel Apt a little bit. So that's a that's been a bit of a surprise, I think, because Apt looked to be you know, have a decent amount of pace early on, but Roland and Van Dorn, since they've got past, have, have kind of pulled away. Yeah, a lot of sim racing, I mean, proper racing as well, is about getting into a rhythm, but certainly I think sim racing is getting into that rhythm, and I think Daniel Ab, maybe with his battle with Stoffel Van Dorn, got knocked out of his rhythm, and he's maybe struggled to get back into it a bit more than the, the two we see on screen, Oliver Roland and Stoffel Van Dorn. Lap 11 of 15. Verlein there, still four tenths of a second behind Eduardo Mortara. Verlein, the championship leader coming into this race with uh, Van Dorn in second, and I don't think, sorry, Van Dorn in third. I don't think that this will move Van Dorn ahead of Verlein in the championship, but it'll certainly close the order in. Van Dorn will get 18 points. Uh, Pascal Verlein will get 12, so it'll swing by six. So uh, that will, yeah, take him to about seven points behind Pascal Verlein. So st within a sort of race victory of getting the lead of the championship. And of course, we've got a race next week. The uh, track will be announced later this week. It's, it hopefully should be exciting. And uh, then the next week after that, the 6th and 7th of June, is the final doubleheader weekend in the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge to see which of these drivers is going to win. Now, here's Mortara. Still right up behind Verline, and if you're Verline, does does risk versus reward play a different role in in sim racing, Dario? Because right now, even in real life, you'd be thinking if you're Verline, don't get involved in a crash with apps and ruin your championship. But what 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 do you make of that? Well, I think risk reward is completely different on a sim anyway, because if you crash in real life, you're going to hurt yourself. You can damage the car. You know, you'd have deal bag gill. Team boss at Mahindra having a big word with you if you if you continuously bashed his car into wall. That doesn't happen in sim racing. So the risk reward ratio is completely different, and that's that's one of the things that um, I think sim racers are, are, are much more used to than the real world guys. Because yeah, you just again a lot of a lot of being a professional racing driver is managing that risk and reward and knowing that if you make a mistake, especially in some high-speed corners, you can really hurt yourself and damage the car. That doesn't exist here. Um, so they go for it, I would say, a lot more. Lap 13 of 15. Mortara still behind Pascal Verlein by just four tenths of a second. Van Dorn's got the lead gap down to half a second for uh, what I would say is the first time but we're about to start the penultimate lap of the race so it's going to be tough for him to make any more charges up the order than that I would have thought here they come down into the hairpin uh, he's within striking zone though Jack you've got to say Stoffel van Doren looks quicker right now than Oliver Rowland and he's just got to that point where a lunge might be on lunge maybe into turn one let's see how he gets off this last corner very neat look how neat Stoffel van Dorn was on the throttle yeah, a bit too far back maybe it'd be a brave lunge if he does go for it but this curved straight and curved braking zone can open up for that no Oliver Rowland's having none of it absolutely on the limit on the brakes van Dorn is nice and close though Jack yeah penultimate lap of the race there you see Roland on the inset we're now on board with Stoffel van Dorn the chaser as it were 
coming out to the back straight, and he's only really got a lap and a half now to go. Sims, Turby, De Vries, Collado, Ma, all out of the running. Uh, at the moment, it's still Mitch Evans in that 10th place, fighting with the Costa over the final championship points. Big slide from Roland, just keeps it together. <laughs> That's one of those points in the Sim Jack where you're just running out of lock, as you know well, and you're thinking, oh, I can't get it, I can't get it. But he's done it well, but has that opened the door for Stoffel van Dorn? No. Roland again very late on the brakes into turn nine, not allowing Stoffel van Dorn to get close enough. But van Dorn's made a great exit out of nine. Has he is he brave enough for this move into ten? No. Nope. One more lap to again. come. Look how much you're seeing Oliver Roland slide the rear, but I just don't think Stoffel van Dorn's close enough. He's probably got three more chances to go for the lead of this race. Final lap of the race yellow light. in the ABB Formula E race at home challenge. We're on board with Stoffel van Dorn in second place, trying to hunt down Oliver Rowland. Oh, he bashes the wall a little bit. Both of these drivers looking for their first win in the series, and it would really bring Stoffel van Dorn into championship contention if he can overtake. They head down on this new Berlin Ebre circuit towards the left-hander at turn six by the radar tower, shows his nose. I think he's a bit too far back still. I think he is too, Jack. There's a yellow light flashing in turn one, but Stoffel van Dorn's exit of turn six was really good, though, as he goes through seven, and now the kink in eight. It, he's got to, it's one of these two hairpins. He's got to lay it all on the line, make a big move. Turn, you see Roland. Ah, Stoffel didn't get it rotated well enough, though. It's allowed Oliver Roland to get ahead, and I think Stoffel's too far back. Down to the final corner. Van Dorn super late on the brakes, but it's not enough. Oliver Rowland, through the final turn, is going to win round five of the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge. And he is happy with that one, beating Van Dorn across the line by two tenths of a second. Third place for Daniel Abt at his home race, having started on pole position. Championship leader Pascal Verlein in fourth. Other title rival Max Gunter only finishing in seventh position. What a tough result for Maximilian Gunter in seventh place. And, uh, well, we'll see what happens in terms of protests and stuff after the race because there was an awful lot of contact in that, an awful lot to digest and dissect, Dario. Yeah, absolutely, Jack. There was that incident we saw with Matt Gunter and, uh, and Pascal Verlein. That's going to definitely be talked about. But I thought Stoffel van Dorn, Oliver Rowland, put on a tremendous race at the end there. And there was no real stupid lunges. They were absolutely on the limit. Uh, but Oliver Rowland's going to be happy with that one, taking a win for Nissan. So what a great drive from Roland. And he had to work hard for it as well. Really entertaining fight for the top positions for, uh, we've had some good races in Formula E. I think that's the best race we've had so far in the Race at Home Challenge. Great fights up at the front. I was going to say clean racing, but aggressive, robust racing. And Roland returns to the pit lane. And uh, as ever in Parc Ferme, Nicky Shields is waiting to talk to him. So we'll hear from him in a couple of moments time. Van Dorn second out third, Verline fourth. Again, interested to see what comes out of the stewards' room with the investigations on the on the Van Dorn incident and Verline. Those two, and uh, in particular, I think the big one is going to be Verline and Gunter because those two came together down at the hairpin. It looked as though Verline maybe squeezed Gunter a bit too much into the wall, and uh, well, that's one for the stewards, isn't it? I think because that could have an outcome on the way that the the championship goes from here on in. Because as I say, we've got next weekend and then the weekend after that is the double header final round on the Saturday and the Sunday. And we've seen that move before, Jack, in real life. We saw it in uh, Santiago, didn't we? With Oliver Roland and Felipe it was Massa. Roland, yeah. <laughs> so it's not out of the way. It's not something that just happens on the sim. No, absolutely not. So we are uh, hoping to speak to Oliver Rowland in a couple of moments' time. But first, let's have a look at the race results. After 15 laps of racing in the ABB Formula E Race at Home Challenge, round five at the Berlin Tempelhof Airport, and Oliver Rowland wins just ahead of Stoffel van Dorn in second place, Daniel App finishing in third. Then it's fourth place for Pascal Verlein, the championship leader. The two Swiss, Eduardo Mortala and Nico Muller, fifth and sixth positions. Uh, we've got Gunter, Lotterer, Da Costa and Evans, the rest of the top 10. Neil Jani just missing out 